like I'm the host of this series is called like new patient secrets, you know, and, and you all know that, you know, I'm on this like mission to be able to like, how can I get like, how can I actually get people in our community even more new patients during this like pandemic during this crisis um, um, while being profitable, like regardless of what like social uh, media uh, uh, platform you're using or search engine or even like doctor marketing. And, and so each like webinar um, or web class, I will interview and deconstruct like some of the best marketers and clinic owners in the world like, and people like Neil, right? And so Neil, like um, super glad for you, like, you know, come join the community. Um, how long, like, when did we first meet Neil? Like, do you remember? <laughs> I know. Oh, I can't even remember. It's been it's been a long time since we've known each other. Um, yeah. yeah, probably either a conference. I think you know maybe a PPS conference or something like that here in the states. Or yeah, I, I think we met. I, I think we met at a PPS conference, right? Huh? Um, I, I don't know which one, and I think I probably likely met you through Jerry Durham somehow, right? Because mm -hmm. I pretty much met most of the, my American friends through Jerry and. And then, and then uh, I had this opportunity to run like my conferences in Canada and mm -hmm. I invited you to actually come and share your like message as well. And so I think that's kind of how our relationship kind of formed, right? You know? Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. It's been, it's been a blast. And uh, yeah, I just, I love coming to Canada. I love working with Canadian uh, practice owners and, and it's just, I always have a blast when I come to your events. Yeah. And so maybe, 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 uh, maybe just to like, um, uh, you have an interesting story, you know, um, including you being in Toronto and doing osteopathy, right? Mm -hmm. You know, maybe, maybe give a, our, our audience like a bit of like, uh, like, um, like your story, you know, like yeah, you know, we'll cut your journey. Cause I think you own some clinics and now, yeah. now you're like creating like high performing, like websites, probably doing like thousands of websites. So you know, what's working, what's not working. Right. That's so, right. So. Yeah, absolutely. So thanks uh, Rick for having me on here. I get, I'm Neil Trickett. Um, I'm CEO of Practice Promotions, and uh, I'm actually originally from England. Most of you don't know that because of the accents uh, only pops out when I'm with family. Um, so originally from England, I moved to the States when I was about 12, and then I went to high school and uh, university, went, became a physical therapist uh, from the Florida International University in Miami, um, did outpatient, inpatient, acute care, you name it. So I've been through uh, pretty much wound care, pretty much anything you can imagine in, in the PT world, uh, done that. Uh, and then I met my wife, Amy. She's also a physical therapist. And so after we got married, we decided, hey, let's open up our own clinic. Uh, what, it should be easy to run, right? You know, we're good practitioners. Uh, so, you know, school hard knocks, you learn al along the way. Um, so we opened our, our practice in uh, Boynton Beach, Florida, which is near West Palm. And uh, we, we ran it for eight years. We did we, we realized that we needed to do a lot of um, research and learning and training around how to run a practice, how to run a business, how to market a business. Uh, so in implementing all of that over the years, we scaled our business up to a, a over a million dollar business. Um, and we were doing a lot of uh, interesting marketing things at the time there. And a lot of other practice owners we knew and we would go to conferences where they would ask us like, hey, what are you doing? Like, can you do that for us? And I said, no, I'm running a practice. Uh, but it planted the seed that there was at the time not that much help for um, physio and physical therapy clinics uh, for their marketing. So I said, hey, we can do something a little bit bigger here and help a lot more people uh, and really elevate the professions because a lot of times our professions are not well known as they should be. Um, so we, we started up practice promotions that was back in 2011. Um, and since then, we've, we've grown, we've expanded tremendously. Uh, I've had the blessing of helping now over 700 clinic locations across the US and Canada uh, wow. with their marketing. And so now we help clinics uh, have a really broad online presence, connect with their past patients, really look professional, um, websites, digital marketing, print, print marketing materials, patient newsletters, things like that. So we really help them you know, take their marketing to a new level to, to expand their reach within their communities. Yeah. And I'm just curious, uh, uh, and I'm just curious. So you, in essence, like, um, you've, you've learned, uh, you've built and created over 700 like websites, right? You know, is that yeah. what you're telling me? Okay. Yeah. That's crazy. Everyone. I don't know a lot of people in this world that's actually like built and like manage and optimize over 700 websites for like, you know, for like people in this profession, like whether it's physiotherapists, chiropractors, massage therapists. And, and yeah. what would you say is like, kind of like, the one thing, the one mistake that most owners like make when it comes to their website, Neil, right? Sure. From, uh, from so, all the 700 websites that you've seen. 
<laughs> so websites are complicated, right? Um, and, but it, you also need to bring clarity to it, right? Um, so we, we actually do anywhere between 20 to 30 websites a month. And we also are doing a lot of uh, patient newsletters. We, we direct mail out in the United States over 4 million newsletters a year for practices uh, nationwide. So what we do is we're lucky that we're able to uh, continuously evaluate and research what's the latest trends, what's working. We get to see data from within all of these websites and bring that back to continuously improve, right? So it is, we're always looking at, hey, what works? And so what's, a, what's the one mistake? What's the one mistake? So the that one mistake see? I would yeah. say is that um, people talk too much about themselves. Love they don't it. think about the consumer, right? Yeah. So the website is not about your practice. It's about how you're going to transform the patient and it needs to speak to them first. Yeah, I, I love that. I love that. And, 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 and a good example, and we did this, uh, we had Nicole in a couple of sessions ago. She's like, the number one, the number one mistake she sees like um, with people doing their websites and their content marketing is they use the word like me, I, like my clinic a lot, when mm -hmm. really like you should be talking about you, your, like those subtle like words have a massive impact on absolutely. conversion rates, right? Would you say that? Would you oh, say absolutely. So? Yes, yeah. yes. And, and that's a big thing, especially putting your headlines. So 80% of the effectiveness of any content marketing, whether it's your website, a blog, an email, 80% comes from the headline. So if you don't put enough effort into crafting uh, the best headline possible that includes you and your and they're like fix your back pain rather yeah. than how we f how we help back pain right it makes a big difference in all kinds of stuff open rates I, and, lo I love yeah. that if that makes sense everyone type in you in the chat like you or your in the chat that's the type of language you should be using like in your copy in your website you know versus like we are the best I am the best physiotherapist. I am the best clinic. We are the best clinic. It should be you, your, and that's the type of language you want to use across all your content marketing right from the website, right? Yeah. If you go back and you look and you see any of your content that says we provide quality care, change it up, right? Yeah. Think about that from a, because that's, that's the number one thing that I see is we provide quality care. Well, everybody provides quality care. Yeah. Right? What they're saying. We provide one-on-one. -on -one, we provide one-on-one -on -one <laughs> care. We provide, we don't use machines, right? You know? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's all about you, but, but let's think about it. Like, like the mindset, like what's the mindset of a consumer? What does a consumer want? Right. Neil? Well, first and foremost, what, what do they want? Right. And what's their behavior? So they, they want to know, Hey, I, I, I bent over and I strained my back. It hurts. What, what can I do to fix this now? So who do they, who do they consult? They consult Dr. Google, right? And they're going to search for free information. They're going to search like, how can I help this right away? They're not thinking, Hey, I got to go see a doctor. I got to go do this. They're like, that's the first behavior is how can I help myself? Right. Without having to spend money or time. And then they, they get to a point where you know, they start looking and researching. Um, then, then coming through your, you know, your searches, you have to obviously stand out and right? you have to be the, a, a choice up in there. Uh, and then you have to, on their website, get them to stick, right. And then start to get interested and then take action. So I really think that in terms of like, if we're talking about website conversions, what, what works is you have to go with the mindset of first, I got to be discoverable. I got to get people who are doing thousands of searches out there every hour, every day in my community for help, backs, shoulders, knees, you name it. I got to be discovered first, right? So I get more people visiting my website and my storefront. It's really my online storefront. And then Rick, how much, how many seconds would you say someone takes when they land on a website to make a decision, whether they're going to stay or not? Three seconds. There you go. Three or five seconds, right? So kind of averages around five seconds. So really you have seconds to get someone's attention, right? So you first, you got to hook them because yeah. if it, if it doesn't hook them, they're gone. I love it. I love it. I love it. And, and let's talk about that. So when you go to a website, right, you know, right. Um, and you got five seconds, right. You know, what, are, what is like the hook, you know, is the hook, the headline or is the hook, the image, like, like what, what is the hook in your world? Like with, with like the high performance yeah. websites, it has to be the whole package, right? You think about when you, when you land on a site, the, the colors, the imagery, the title, it has to connect. It has to go. Wow. Whoa. Makes me stop. Right. So that is, that's the first thing you have to, to like look at in your own website is 
if I'm a patient and I land on it, does it make me go, wow, what's this, right? If, if you feel that, then you know you've got a good start, right? Then the headline is what then kind of fuels them a little bit further, starts to pique the interest. And then imagery and, and, and language then throughout the site starts to build the interest. So first, yeah. it's always attract, interest, and then convert. Yeah, I love that. I love it. And, and people who are like, who like are inside my community, like I'm a big Russell Brunson fan and it's like the same thing. It's like, what's your hook? You know, can you hook them with like um, the right headline with the right image? Right. You know, and then once you hook them and the hook is usually something emotional, right? Yes. You know, it yes. has to be an emotional hook. It can't be a logic hook. Right. And right. as they scroll down your website, um, you know, 50% of these people will convert on the emotion, which is going to be your hook, right? You know, and then mm -hmm. based on your story, that's where you can give the logic of why you should do it. And that's what most websites do already. They give you the logic of why you should do something. And yeah. then, and then, you know, and then like for the, and then the very bottom is like the, the people that like are the procrastinators, like they convert based on urgency, right? You know, so mm -hmm. like they want to be saying like, hey, th there's only two of these left and then I'll buy, right? You know, and yeah. so that, that's just kind of like, you know, and we yeah. talk a lot about that in our marketing class. And so, so it's like, it's interesting to share that. Um, so just some of the, some of the things there, Rick, just to kind of bring it back is, is we're talking about behaviors of a patient, right? So, you know, of course, there's all kinds of different audience. We've got uh, like a sports audience. We've got a, you know, senior balance audience. So there's all kinds of people. You have to really look at who, who is your niche in your clinic, who you're going to be able to service the most. But think about when you go, re, when you go discover a, a service or a product that you're interested in, you, you don't just make a purchase decision or a decision to take action right away off the first page. Like you do your due diligence, right? So first you have to kind of get interested in what they have to offer and then if they start to poke around in the website, they learn more, they see, and then they're going to go back and check out your Google page and see what, you know, reviews think people have said about you. They might check out your social media. So there's this whole circle of, of your online brand presence yeah. of how people are going to connect and believe in you and build trust in your practice. I love that. I love that. And so, and, and here's one of the stats that, um, that I, I, I see, and I'd love to hear what you think about these stats is that, um, Actually, before we type in the, ch like, yeah, so these are some of the stats we see is that, like, a typical average website, according to WordStream, is converting at, like, a, about 2%, you know? And then mm -hmm. the top performing websites are doing, like, double digits at 11 or 12%, right? Type mm -hmm. in the chat, everyone, like, what is your website converting at, right? And if you do not know, type um, ID, is it IDK? Yeah, I don't yeah, know, IDK. right? If you don't know, type in IDK, right? Um, and so... Um, and, 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 and Neil, like what, what are you seeing like with your range of your 700 websites? Yeah. So I, I love what people are typing in the chat and it's just, this is such a common thing that when we talk to practice owners that, um, a very small percentage do know these, these metrics and a lot don't. Right. And it's okay that you don't know, but it, it, as long as you're aware, like, Hey, I need to learn about that. So in terms of metrics, it's really fascinating from a physios. Well, and I would say too, it's very different between the two countries. So in the US and Canada, in Canada, what we see is that uh, the public is a lot more used to going to a physio, right? They, they will actually research more physio and know that they can go there more proactively. In the, in the, in the US, uh, we're, uh, the public is, knows about physical therapy, but they're not confident or don't really understand why they would go see a physical therapist. So they actually are, are quite different between the countries in those conversion rates. So in Canadian, they'll be higher than they are in the US. Um, and it's interesting because we'll actually kind of do some research, research before we start working with someone. And usually they either don't know their conversion rate or they're very low. They might be like 0.7%. So not even a percent, like 1% of all the traffic that comes will turn into a, a call or a form fill or something like that. But we're getting, uh, we get clients up into, you know, the three, four, uh, sometimes a 5% range uh, here in the US, which is really high. Um, for US based clients and then a little bit higher for Canadian. Yeah, yeah, no, and yeah, I, th I think you're bringing a point. So I find that everyone, like in the world of clinic owners, everyone's consumed with getting more traffic. You know, how can I get more and more traffic? And, and um, you know, I'm a marketer, I love marketing. Getting traffic is hard. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of work with getting traffic and yeah. cold traffic is expensive, paid advertising is expensive, right? Mm -hmm. There is way more opportunity. Um, um, for you to be able to like 
increase your conversion, like do a better job of converting what's coming to your website already. It's the same thing as like what we do with like operations, you know, there's way more opportunity for you to be able to like convert a patient who already has come to your clinic into a full plan of care. It's the same thing with running a website. You have a better opportunity to be able to like make your website better so you can convert the existing traffic you were getting to be able to, like, even if you could double, like increase your uh, website conversion by 1%, that's an mm -hmm. extra 25% more calls, right? Right. But yeah. like everyone's like so consumed with getting more traffic, you know, yeah. but like, but the money is actually on the conversion rates, right? Right. Yeah. It's not about how many people you can visit, get visiting your website. It's really about yeah. the right people visiting your website who will then take action, right? They're, they're if, the people that are going to turn into a new if patient. That, if that makes sense, everyone, you know, type in conversion. All right. If that makes sense, this game is about what can you do on your website to convert more people? Because like, if you want more traffic, I can get you more traffic. You could buy traffic out of like India or like Russia, like they'll cost you like a thousand bucks, you know, and you can get all these people click on your website, but it doesn't do anything. <laughs> yeah. I also see mistakes with practice owners. Like they, they say, Hey, I'm going to run some Facebook ads. I maybe run some Google ads here and it's going to, I'm going to get flooded new patients in the door, but they have this poorly converting website in the middle. And maybe even they're not doing the Facebook ads or the Google ads, right? Cause they're not, they're just trying to get people there. They're not really getting the right people, people who are raising their hand that they have a problem. Yeah, I love that. I love that. I'm just curious, who has a, like, I want to do like something live on the spot. Who has a website that you want like Neil and us to analyze right now? Type in your website, like in the chat, if you want to be vulnerable. Okay. So we're going to do something live on the chat and, and uh, we can go from there. <laughs> All right, let's do the first one. Okay. What, what's the first one? Uh, Oh geez! Wow, people are very people are very uh, vulnerable, eh? That's like, you know what? Nice. Let's do. What should we do? <laughs> There's a lot here. Okay. Uh, uh, let's see. This is the fun part. Okay. So I want to do. I want to do someone that has a multidisciplinary clinic, physio, chiro, and massage. Who, who has one of those? Right? Because those ones are a little more trickier, right? Mm -hmm. Right, Neil? Right. They are. That, but I, I will say uh, one one behavior that we see is that. Um, those clinics tend to do better uh, than just a, a single service alone. Um, my feeling is that people look for something, uh, uh, a clinic that offers lots of options. Right, right. Okay. Um, let me, let me, let me, let me just pull up one of the things. And, and, and but, but um, can you talk about like why you think the multidisciplinary clinics are, um, are they convert better? Like, uh, yeah, I think, again, it, this is just my hunch, right? It's kind of hard yeah. to weed through the data sometimes. But um, it, my feeling is that as a behavior, people look for um, an, a place with more services or, or like more options, right? So if you have more options, then you might have something that works for me, right? Um, or they may have had a good experience with, you know, chiropractic before and someone told about coming to physical therapy and then they see in your clinic you have physio and chiro and massage and acupuncture and like, wow, this place must be good because it has a lot of different things. And I had a good experience with this thing before. So there's lots of different, different things in play with that, but that's really my hunch uh, when it comes to that. Okay. Awesome. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to pull up this clinic. Okay. All sure. right. Cause this is a, this is a multidisciplinary clinic. And, 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 and by, uh, by the way, Neil, is that the trend that you're seeing with uh, a lot of the clinics in the States where they're becoming more multidisciplinary? Like, you know, like you, you'll see physio, chiros, massage, like um, being a multidisciplinary clinic. Uh, in the States, not as much. Okay. There, are, there, there are, there are those clinics that do that. And that I would say that, um, you know, they, they might offer those, additional service like a massage and phys and physical therapy together, right? Okay. Uh, they, they might do more things like, they kind of put it more under the, the techniques of the services part, such as dry needling or something like that. Okay. Um, but I definitely, in, in, with our Canadian clients, yeah, there's a trend towards incorporating more disciplines within the whole service. Yeah. Yeah. That's interesting. Right. So, okay. Yeah. When I see, when I see one of our biggest like coaching clients, you know, like our, our biggest coaching clients are doing like two, three, four million dollars of like uh, revenue at their clinics. They're all multidisciplinary clinics, you know, and and, yeah. and and when I look at the revenue breakdown, you know, like roughly a third of it is physical therapy, a third is chiropractic and a third is massage therapy. And, and maybe like, um, and the trending I'm seeing is that 
I'm seeing more and more physical therapists in the U.S. setting up more multidisciplinary clinics as well. Like, I don't think it's like, like, I don't think, I don't think it's taking off, but I'm seeing the trending people are starting to yeah. like, you're like, Hey, look, you know what? I, I want to, you know, uh, I, I, I want more SEO terms, right? <laughs> I want my website to like get bigger. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> Yeah. So, so here, here's a website. Okay. So, so, uh, I don't know who's what, I think this is Jacqueline, right? You know, so Jacqueline Adelaide clinic, I don't know where she is, but long story short is this is, this is, this is, uh, this is, uh, this is a typical website that you see right now. Would you say so? Yeah. yeah. Okay. And so let me, let me scroll down. Okay. This is all I see. Okay. Okay. Gotcha. Okay. So, right. so, so, um, um, and let's do this rule, everyone. Uh, Jacqueline, I hope you're, thank you for being vulnerable. Um, and so we're going to do some feedback. So maybe type in the chat, everyone. Um, based on f the five second rule, like what do you see, what do you experience here? Type that in the chat. And Neil, I want to hear from you. Yeah, so uh, just kind of behaviors here too. So when someone comes here, you need to have what's called an eye trail, right? You, you kind of go left to right and like a Z pattern, right? So look at Adelaide Clinic. I'll see the book on, it's very good that you have a book online uh, button at the very top right. That's your most important area of your website because that's the place you need to take action. Um, the, the, I don't know, the, the, the imagery and the font in the middle, do, do you find it a little hard to focus? Like where, to, where you want to put your attention? Well, there's a lot of dots. Like what are those dots? What is that? Right. I guess when you click on it, it... What is this? Oh, I see what you see. When you click on it, it'll choose your area. Oh, okay, and go right into to navigate. And then what happens? Okay, I have a back back of my head, and then what happens? I close it. So I, I'm a little confused here. What am I supposed to do with this? Oh, here it is. It's okay. almost like a little like lead magnet thing, right? Am gotcha. I right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. My pain is I'm burning. It's uncomfortable. Continue. And then there you go. Okay. Right. Yeah. So you're going to, uh, you're kind of going right into the, uh, the marriage before the date, you know? So we're going to kind of get the person to date us a little bit more before we yeah. start asking for like, Hey, take action. Now, um, yeah. we got to really capture their attention and their interest. So, uh, this is where you want to use a lot of, uh, you know, a couple of things. So first off, we want to use some, some imagery in here that, that someone can relate to right away. Right. So if they see themselves as, you know, um, maybe they're in their fifties and they see themselves like want to be active, like they were in their forties. Well, do you have people who are active in their forties? Right. Um, so some of that kind of imagery would really help start to get someone to stick. And then, um, there's always a balance in the headlines because the headlines are very important from, from the hook, right. To get people to stay, but you've also got to think with, okay, I need to have certain phrases in there so that it can help me with my SEO, my rankings, right? Yeah. So that's why you need, you know, physiotherapy or chiropractic. So I can understand why, you know, we, we've done this with putting chiropractic and physio in there. So you want to be able to weave some of that into that language into your uh, headline, but a welcome to Adelaide clinic is not going to resonate as well as, you know, we help you live your life pain free. Right. Or get back to living your life pain free again. Right. And we're talking about these words again. Right. We mm -hmm. are, you know, like this is this is all about me here. Right. It has nothing to do with the consumer now. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then if I would I think the imagery and the kind of lead magnet style that you've gone into is a good idea, but it might be, you know, much further down on the page for someone to get action or even on like, you know, request an appointment or you know, learn more about your problem and you take them to that page and then they, they kind Neil, of you're so polite, man. <laughs> <laughs> and so, so here, here's well, I my appreciate thoughts. Them being vulnerable, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so Neil, like, let me ask you, like, uh, like I, I'm on the same page. Like, you know, if, if your ideal customer is that 45 year old mom, right. Mm -hmm. You should have a picture of that four to five year mom, like, you know, like on there. Right. You know, yeah. cause like it relates with you. Right. You know, is that like, is that the, is that the ideal like imagery that you you're talking about Neil or is it like, or is it like those, like I see all clinics do this, like they show this, you know, they show this happy person climbing on top of a mountain and they're doing a yoga pose. Like what, what converts the best Neil, right? <laughs> you got to make it real to the person. Right. So, that uh, 45 year old mom, you know, bending down to pick up her kids as a picture or, you know, reaching for something or, 
you know, being active or running or something like that, that you got to kind of play to what people want to have. Yeah. You don't want to go like the, the total end of the end of the spectrum where it's a very Zen like picture and you know, you're not, no one's yeah. ever going to be, you know, on top. It's of like those numbers. annoying dentist uh, like websites and ads you see where you just see all these fake stock photos of people smiling and you know, yeah. like it's so fake, right? You know? Yeah. Right? Yeah. The <laughs> best performing websites we have is the, the clinics that work hard to have professional photography or, or videography. So uh, actually do you have recover therapy up, and yeah. up there? You know, let, 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 let's go through that after, right? Let's go through yeah, no what worries. a website should look like. But, but yeah. so what you're saying is the, you know, like don't use stock photos, but use like real photos, right? Yeah. So one of the, th one of the challenges that we have as a, as a marketing agency helping PT practices is that a lot of practices don't put enough effort into getting their own pictures, their own video done. And it's a really good practice for you on a yearly basis, at least to get a professional photographer in so that you can have pictures of therapists treating patients, your clinic, new headshots, yeah. uh, you know, have a videographer, you know, come in and help you out. So it's, it's worthwhile. It's a small investment, but you can use yeah. this throughout the year in all kinds of your marketing materials and your website. I love that. And let me ask you, Neil, what do you, what is the, what is the top three most visited like uh, pages on a website? Homepage for one. Yeah. What's number two? Um, that's going to be either the, uh, uh, the, depending on like the services page or really the second one is a, the about us page, the staff. Page. Exactly. So your team, yeah. right? Yeah. So that is another reason why you got to take these photos. Everyone, the, the number two, the two most important like visited websites, like, sorry, like, like the top visiting website is actually uh, pages on your website is actually your team photos. So if you got shitty team photos, right? <laughs> you're not gonna, people don't want to come to your clinic, right? You know, like right. you gotta have those branded t-shirts yeah. And hey, everyone, if that makes sense, type in like real photos. Okay. Stop using those stock photos that is that you buy on like, sh uh, like that everyone has on their website. Everyone has like these, like there's, there's the typical like stock photos that see everyone have on their websites. Right. Right. Yeah. 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 There's always the same couple of act actor or actresses. Right. Um, so yeah, real photos is, is where it is at. And uh, again, there, there's, there's a wide range of uh, practice owners that we work with. Some are just do an amazing job of getting very professional photo, you know, photography of themselves. Um, and then there's ones that like just took an eye photo against a wall, you know, with their, with their staff. So. Yeah. yeah. And here, so here's, uh, that's here's really staff. nicely done. I, I like the way that you did the, uh, the imagery here with your, with your doctors. That's, that's really nice. It sticks out. Yeah. Actually I like that too. Right. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, I, th I think the, I think, the, I think the real photos is really important, right? You know, yeah. right? and from a here, so here's a couple tips from a photo standpoint. Um, it's great to have pictures of the clinic. I hope you have those also in your Google, my business profile. Very, very important. Uh, people will check out your Google, my business profile a lot. Um, but where are the pictures of your therapist and your Kairos hands on with people? People yes. want to see the hands on therapy and it's much when you do them, like do it as a staged photo, because, you know, we, we do techniques that we know work. So that my favorite is always the, you know, the, the leg on the shoulder and you're stretching a hamstring. Well, to the lay person, they see that it looks like, looks really painful. Right? It looks like you're getting cranked on. Um, so you don't necessarily want to take those kind of pictures. You want to have like a gentle placement of your hands on someone's knee or uh, cradling their head or, you know, something to that effect where you're, you're showing it as a soothing hands-on, uh, type therapy that they're going to be coming to. What was something like this? Yeah. So that's a little better. Yeah. 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 So these are, these are my friends at Mild Detox, but I, I think, I think like, you know, a good example is that like, is you want to show like a real person and like, um, you want to show your ideal customer and like mm -hmm. them working on them. Right. And it's yeah, not so a stock photo. Right. So even here, like a, a, just a slight, it's a really good photo. And I like the way that they've done it just to even a slight alteration. So you, you could have a person come who's maybe like, think of someone who's got a lot of, a lot of pain, right? Um, if they, if they see this image, they might think, Hey, that guy's punching her in the ribs. Right. Uh, we know right. that that's going to be a good, you know, soft tissue mobe, but even just maybe having a little bit of a slight placement with an open hand, right? Or, or maybe two hands, like looking a little bit more gentle, not so much locked elbow. So it's like all these little slight variations to see, like, wow. how can you make it look soothing? Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I love that. Part of it. 
Yeah. And then like, what do you think about the site map here or the menus here? Like, you know, right. Like, what do you think? Yeah. About so, that? okay. So we've got, uh, active, let's, yeah. okay. So we're talking a lot about the services under pain. Is there a drop down? No, let's see okay. what happens. You click on pain, right? Okay, accident, joint pain. And then yeah. if we go to the left, uh, do those scroll into deeper pages? So uh, if I click okay. on like no, uh, lower back pain there, is that is that no. Uh, clickable? No, no. Yeah. All right. And so, so you know what? Like, like my, my experience, like, you know, uh, like I used to run an e-commerce site and we're heavy on SEO. We took that site from doing 2,000 unique visitors a month to 60,000 and uh -huh. And, and I could say the one single thing that made us get there was actually having the right site map, you know, mm -hmm. right? Because yeah. that was the emphasis of like how you create all your other content and how your, your, how your, how your, how your site map could actually help you start ranking for the terms that you want, like physiotherapy, chiropractic, massage, mm -hmm. but like you got to build it all in like within your site map, right? Yeah. So one of the things that we do is that you actually want to break that down into individual pages. So, you know, if you have a, if you're in your pain page, uh, you want to have like a, a back pain page, you want to have a shoulder pain page, you want to have a knee pain page. So you can actually have a lot deeper and broader website. And what Google looks for with ranking is that they actually look at those individual pages. And because you have a lot of terminology on there, you know, lower back pain, back pain relief, all these different things, those individual pages will rank themselves for particular searches people are doing in the area. So when someone's searching for like, how do I help my lower back pain? Now you have a chance of that particular one back pain page ranking better for that, that one person's search. So now you can actually get people who are looking for their, for their help, right. Uh, on their particular condition. Yeah. Yeah. And one thing I noticed about this website too, is that like, you know, we talked about already, like, us um, having more, um, there should be there should be more imagery of like patients, you know, and of team, yeah. right? You know, yeah. and, and them working each other. Um, it's also like I love seeing like I love seeing like video like reviews, right, or video testimonials, right? You know, oh, yeah, yeah, right. So patient success stories, right? You mm -hmm. know, because it's kind of like the modern day like uh, it's like Amazon. When's the last time you bought something and you didn't look at a review? Like, why would a healthcare consumer do anything different, right? You know, like what what is your what is your experience with like websites that have like video um, video testimonials or uh, video patient stories, right? Yeah, so you need a uh, you need a blend, right? So you need uh, you need the video testimonials. You also need small snippets. So the way people behave is they skim. They skim first. They kind of like scroll through quickly, see, is, is this worth my time? And then they start to read kind of the headlines and stuff. They might go straight to like a testimonial block or something on there. Um, and then if you have kind of a short snippet of, of and ideally when you're, when you're asking for reviews from your patients, there's one simple question you should always train your staff on how to ask for a review. And the question is, when you're asking the patient, what can you do now that you couldn't do before? And what this does is it gets, it frames the patient's mind in thinking of an objective improvement rather than a subjective experience. So you might see a lot, some of your reviews like, Oh, it was so wonderful here. And Susie was an amazing physical therapist. And I just love it here versus the, the type of review that says, uh, this place is amazing. I couldn't walk 10 feet before and now I'm back to running. I'm so happy I'm able to get my life back. That's a very powerful review. So you're kind of like cultivating those. If you can have those type of reviews, like some more objective type reviews in your website, that's going to get people to take more action. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and there's a lot in the chat where like, you know, the province, uh, you know, depending on what province or state you're in, like there is, you know, there's perceived restrictions on not being able to put right. like testimonials. And I, I just want to throw that out there. I think there's all a misunderstanding under, of what you can and cannot do. And there's actually ways around that. So I, I want to go into this whole college route, but there are ways on how you could create, um, um, how do I say this? There, there is way that you could display this stuff so it doesn't violate your, uh, your colleges, but also um, I want to say that like, um, I, 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 um, I think there's a lot of misunderstanding what you can and cannot do with the colleges. Right. Yeah. You know, and, and that's a whole nother episode that I don't want to go into because we end up getting these <laughs> battles, but you know, but like for this one, let's just focus on what it would look like. 
Yeah. Um, but I'm gonna tell you, like, there's a lot of people doing it, and and I think there's a lot of misunderstanding what you can or cannot do as well, right? In terms of okay. Google reviews and t- testimonials. Don't call it testimonials. P- patient success stories. You can have like a non-professional. Like, there's a lot of ways to you could go around this, but I'm not gonna get into that, right? You know, otherwise yeah. that is going to be <laughs> that is going to be like the thing, right? Bottom you know, line so. is, how can you get more success stories that you can tell people? Yes. People love stories, right? That's what exactly. That's what yeah, I love it. I love it. Yeah. And, and also as a consumer, because I'm heavy on content marketing, right? Mm-hmm. And so when I look at this, if I'm not ready to book now, right? Like, and I don't know, like this clinic, I don't know who you are, right? Like, I'm not ready to buy it. I'm just like, I'm, I'm at that research mode right now. Like, I just realized I have like back pain and I, or I have like, I'm looking for a back pain treatment. I don't know whether I need physio, chiro, massage, or even whether I won't go to this clinic, right? You know, yeah. um, I, there's no opportunity for me, like, like, um, like how do I back up? So for me is that if I'm not ready to book right now, I like to actually on this website, I like to have like hooks on here that allows me able to like at least capture their email so I can market them or nurture them to actually buy from me later. Right. Like Neil, can you maybe talk about that on, 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 sure. um, on, on that aspect of a website that I think 99% of most owners do not have. Yeah, so I think that they're missing many different opportunities. And, and again, it comes back to the behavior of the, the, the person interacting with your website, the potential patient, right? What, what are they most comfortable doing and using? Are they in the, that big research mode where they may want a free, uh, you know, some more info, so free book? Like, do you have different eBooks or things on your website that you can give away, right? To do more lead capture than have email follow up with afterwards? Um, the, do you have, like here, we don't really have a, a good, call to action from a phone. Some, some people who might be a little bit older might be more comfortable picking up the phone to book an appointment than they are online. Right. And then we've also got people who want to ask a question. So is there some sort of live chat on this or even a chat bot uh, in that, that regards. Right. So um, this is an example of a recovery therapy in Tulsa, uh, Oklahoma here. And I think that they did a, uh, this is a website that we did and they did an amazing job of providing us with an awesome video uh, that they branded and shot in the clinic. So right away I stop and start watching when I land on this page. Right. So. Yeah. Wow. Um, and, and, and this is a multidisciplinary clinic too. It's like a physical therapy, chiropractic, sports massage, functional training. Right. Right. Yeah. yeah. So they're showing all kinds of different things that they're doing in here and the patient experience when you come here. Right. So they went really into like a lot of the, different uh, technologies and things that they have. So they're able to really showcase their beautiful facility, the technologies that they have. So as a consumer, I'm going, wow, look at what all these guys have to offer. This looks like it could help me. Right. So it gets people to start right from the beginning, but this is what I was talking about before where this clinic was smart, where they, they invested in the videography, right. And professional photography to make their website look amazing. And, and how much, how much would it like for, for people who don't know, like how much, like how much do you expect to pay for like a video like this, Neil? Right. Uh, is that like know, a $5,000 thing? $3,000 no, thing? Right. No, I think it probably a little bit less than that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Probably a little bit less than that. So and it, it depends on where you are uh, obviously and, and what you're looking for. So yeah. it, th- I think this is a very high end, well done one. You yeah. may not even need something as, you know, super professional as this. Yeah. And maybe people type in the chat, what do you, what do you, like, what do you like? And uh, what do you, what do you like or don't like about like um, uh, um, this website right now? Right. Just quickly type that in the chat. Right. And so Neil, I'm going to throw it back as people type in the chat, what they like and don't like about this website is that, um, you know, like, um, have you, do you think it's better to put like an image or a video? Right. Uh, if you have the video, that's going to, you know, and it's tough to say. So the, you, the one thing with marketing is you test and tweak and you test and you tweak, right? You're constantly testing because you don't know the behaviors of the masses, uh, how, how they interact. So only until you kind of do some testing, then you find out like, hey, people interacted a lot more with my video. Or you know what? The page actually started to look a lot better when, um, when we had a, a little bit thinner uh, picture up there. So one of the things that we do... Um, is we actually have what's called a heat map. So the heat map actually tracks behaviors on the website page. And it, it, it tracks like how, pe- how many people scroll down, where they click on the page. So we can get a lot of information about how the person's behaving, you know, if they, 
uh, click on a particular button a lot more. If they say don't scroll down fast enough um, or they don't scroll down enough, we might change some of the layout to, to optimize that. So you really- yeah, I love to- that, everyone. And my biggest take home for you just talked about, Neil, is that like, um, I don't know what converts better, whether it's like this image or this video. Mm-hmm. And the purpose of the exercise, right, is, is like, uh, for one month, you'll try this, and the next month you try this, and then you'll see which one actually gives you a higher conversion rate, you know, right? Yeah. Let the data tell you what you should do, whether that is the right image that matches like your type of like uh, ideal customer, right? Yeah. So. Now, one thing, Rick, is you scroll down a little bit here. Yes. So if you start to scroll down. Okay, so do you see what happens with the menu bar at the top? That's called a sticky menu, right? So all your 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 key information and your call to action is in that navigation bar at the top. So you want that to, to roll down with the person as they're going along. So they're, they're as, uh, from a desktop perspective, they're getting, you know, they're kind of looking through your information, what you have to offer, what, how it's going to help them. But it makes it a lot better for conversions if you have this men, uh, sticky menu rolling down with you because at any time they can call, they can request an appointment uh, from there. Or they can yeah. add into different things. So again, kind of coming back to also that, uh, and here we have different options. So uh, we get people subscribe into the blog. So one of the things that we do is we help a clinic uh, get a consistent blog going every uh, two weeks. The blog posts go out up on their website, which helps them with their SEO. It helps them out with their, um, uh, you know, subscribers. It gets emailed out, goes up on social, all those good things there. Um, and people will subscribe into that. So again, that's sort of that one of those low, uh, what do you call it? low resistance offers. Hey, start getting some more information on us, how we can help you. Right. Well, let's be honest. Like do most people subscribe to a blog, Neil? Right. I, I think, I think, most people, people, but like I said, you're, you have a, a, a variety of different people coming to your website. Some people yes. like, Hey, I got to make an appointment right now. Some people like, well, what's this place about? I've heard about them. Yeah. What, what is physical therapy for some people? So, in so let me ask you another question different way, Neil. Yeah. Is there what, like, if you have all these like eBooks, right. You know, or maybe like you got all these free online courses, right. You know, right. Mm-hmm. Um, I call them all lead magnets, right. So whether it's an eBook or maybe it's a course, right. You know, or a free course, or maybe it's like some type of like, um, f- like free scan or free test or whatever it is. Right. Um, are you going to have a higher opt-in rate with that or a blog? Neil, from what you've seen. Oh, from, for, like, for the lead point. magnet. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So w- which one, Neil? Sorry, I didn't, I didn't. From, catch the, from the lead magnet from like a special specialized ebook. Cause if you have a book that's saying how to help your sciatica pain yeah. and I've got sciatica pain, I'm going to click more on that. Right. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, so, and, and, and like, you know, like, uh, you know, like, and I, like, yeah. And I totally agree with you. Is that like, I think like, you know, once again, like what you need to have on your website is all these other reasons you need to be able to capture people's emails, um, on like specific hooks when they're not ready to like book an appointment yet, you know? Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. And like Neil, like these eBooks or these type of like e lead magnets give you opportunity to do that. Right. Everyone, if, if that makes sense, type in email. Okay. Cause not everyone is typed in the chat. If that makes sense, if you're not, everyone's ready to call to book right now. So you need to be able to capture their email by having like hooks type in email. If that makes sense. I think this is the part where like, if you start doing stuff like this, it's going to highly increase your, your conversion rate. Right. Uh, one of the things um, you can look on here too, Rick, is if you go under the, uh, I think it's the, what we treat there. Um, okay. So right here, do you see the menu that pops up with again here, all the different, deeper pages um, that relate to, you know, what someone may be looking for. And this is each one of these individual pages, the way that uh, you now have them and you have a a lot of opportunity for, for deeper content on there. These pages themselves will rank better for, um, you know, someone's looking for headache relief, right. Or neck pain relief. Um, it's going to be more key to those particular. And if everyone understands what Neil's talking about, cause he's kind of geeking out like us marketing geeks on the left hand of, on the left hand, bottom left, you're going to see like the URL structure, right? You know, right. What you're going to see is that like, you know, this clinic is clearly going for physical therapy, you know, right. And they're creating sub pages like back pain relief underneath like that category. Right. So this ties it back into the site map again of kind of what you're doing. Right. Right. Do you, you want to talk a little more about that without getting too technical on why that's important if you want to rank? Yeah. So 
uh, Google looks for matching uh, what someone's searching for, right, to what they think is going to be the best, what they're really looking for, you know. Um, so they, the, if you have a lot of deeper pages on the website, not only does it give power to the, the main homepage, the main website page, uh, but it'll actually, uh, people that are searching for a specific help, right? So not everybody knows that they want to go see a physio or a chiropractor or a physical therapist. Um, they're going to, again, first ask Dr. Google, how do I help my back pain? Right? So imagine someone now seeing that specific back pain page on your website, one of these deeper pages. Um, they would have never even thought about you before or even looked at you before, but now they have this opportunity and that's going to bring a lot more people to your website. So Neil, like, um, yeah, I, I love what you just said there. And, and from my experience of running websites, um, is that the more pages that you have and the deeper it is, you're going to have, you're sending way more signals to Google that, um, 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 you're sending way more signals and you're going to rack on certain categories. If you do it right, you know, it's a function of how many pages you have within your website and the blog is a function of that as well. Your blog right. is this way where like, you know, you're creating all these new pages and all these yeah. sub pages within physiotherapy, all your sub pages within like chiropractic, you know, all your sub pages within like massage therapy, you know, that are relevant by you having these sub pages it will actually help you boost the terms of stuff like massage therapy, like chiropractic, like physiotherapy, right? Is yeah. that, is that the right Absolutely. Yeah, way to think about it? Right on that. So actually, if you click on that one page right there, if you click that, okay. it should take us to the uh, <clears throat> next page. So I want you to look at the, the URL at the top. All right. Okay. So now we have recovertherapy.com slash physical dash therapy dash services. Yeah. And then we get the back pain relief. So one of the things that one of the tricks here in the URL is it, with each one of these structured pages, uh, since one of the main things you try to get a, you know, this, this one's focused a lot on physical therapy. So we're trying to get them to rank near number one for physical therapy in these different towns. So each one of these pages now has physical therapy services as part of their address, right? And part of their, yeah. what's called a URL. Uh, so okay. that in itself helps the, the whole website rank better for physical therapy as one of the key terms. But now we have all, again, back pain relief. Google's looking at that part of the URL too and serving that up in front of people who are looking for back pain relief. Yeah. So um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw something really wild out here, Neil, and I, I want to hear what you think. So um, I, when I ran my e-commerce website, it was very similar to like this to start it off. But then what I realized was that I want to start ranking for like physio supplies, office supplies, chiro supplies. And I actually made that part of my site map because those are the key terms I went for. Right. You know? Mm -hmm. And so if I'm running a multidisciplinary clinic, right. Um, does it make sense for you to actually create like, um, what are your thoughts about like your, your top, like your nav here or your site map where like, you're just making very like clear where like, you're going after physiotherapy. I'm going after chiropractic. I'm going after massage, right? Like uh, versus like bundling it versus within what we treat here. I think if we do that, you're all just bundling within physical therapy, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it, it depends on what the clinic wants, right? What they're trying to accomplish. So what, what you're saying there, it can be a good idea to have if they're really trying to um, have each one of those seg I would come back to kind of like how maybe a clinic treats. So uh, one clinic, they may look at um, kind of a, a holistic approach where they'll, the patient will have physical therapy, chiropractic, acupuncture as a whole treatment. And then there's other clinics that have that as just separate entities within the same you know, building yeah. basically. Right. So depending on what you want, whether you want the person just to, to talk about, Hey, we have all these different options or you're going to go through all of these different options to help your particular problem, or you want to come for this option or you want to come for this option, you would change up what you need here in the, uh, you know, in the navigation. So if you wanted to really focus heavily on chiropractic, acupuncture, physical therapy, yeah, you kind of have that separately there in the site map. I love it. I'm going to, I'm going to show you something. Uh, take a look at this, Neil. I, I had a, uh... I had one of my SEO guys kind of put this together, um, you know, and he helped me with my e-commerce, but like, um, like, what are your thoughts about this? Like, you know, in, in this case is that this is for a tip, this is a site map for a typical, like uh, multidisciplinary clinic, you know, and, and kind of what we talked about. If, if you're going after like physiotherapy, right. Mm -hmm. Then within physiotherapy or physical therapy, like these are all the sub pages that you could actually build as a menu, you know, right. Yep. You know, 
on, on terms they want to rank. And then if you're doing chiropractic, you know, your number two service, same thing, you know, like I want to go after like terms like shockwave therapy, active release therapy, uh, grass and like bucket, like whatever, like that chiro is really good at doing or bucket what terms you want to relate for physiotherapy within physio and then bucket within chiro. And then, and then you could do one for massage as well. Right. You know, like, and then, and then like, like, um, like what are, your, what are your thoughts about this type of like structure for kind of what we just talked about now? Yeah, I, I like it a lot. Uh, the one thing I would just see in here is depending on uh, if it's a single location or multi-location, you might want to incorporate in that stream a partic the like particular location. So like say if you have right. two locations, you might have one particular town and another, another town in that string. Right? Okay. And then, um, I would see too kind of, and this is where, um, if you, if you, you can do actually do a little research with Google, uh, if there's particular, um, Oops, particular conditions you, you want to look at, do you want to, are people searching more by the particular technique that that chiropractor is doing, or are they searching a little bit more by the particular condition? So yeah. you, you might get some very, um, well-qualified patients for a particular technique, but it might be a very small percentage of people that actually search through that throughout the year. Um, yeah. But things like you have there that are really good, like physiotherapy, motor vehicle accident, excellent, right? Because like that's bread and butter. Like, let's yeah. be honest. If I run a typical generic clinic, like a typical orthopedic clinic, I want my motor vehicle accidents. I want workers comp, you know, and if, if I'm in Alberta, I want HS. If I'm in Ontario, I want OHIP, you know, and, and like, you know, like um, IMS treatment, like, you know, like just, bucket bucket ever yeah and so that's that's kind of um yeah no yeah so i would just uh and and whatever you're doing there with your website and however you want to uh you know work with that just kind of first go for, like as we were talking about before go for the mindset of what a patient's going to be looking for don't just totally. list out all the different treatments that you may have um yes. right yeah yeah, no, that's cool. Hey, if everyone makes sense, you know, like I, I think the money is in the site map. If that makes sense, type in site map. You know, I think the site map in my thoughts is like the first step um, that you should talk with your marketing agency on so that you actually have the right structure. And then all your content marketing is going to be based from that, you know, right. And, and all the stuff we talked about, but with, if you have a shitty site map, you're not going to ever rank. Let's be honest. <laughs> right? right. Would you agree? Neil? Like that's like yeah. one-on-one, right? Absolutely. Yeah. We'll, we'll see just because of, of again, the in-depth pages, the, the, the better site map, we'll yeah. just see a jump in traffic, like double within usually like three, four months, they're almost doubling their traffic to their website. And it's not yeah. like we're doing any Google advertising or Facebook advertising, any of that stuff. It's just organic. It's just people now yeah. finding them or searching better. Yeah. And so for the, like, there's a lot of people like, um, that gets stuck with creating their own blog content, right? You know, Neil, like, um, mm -hmm. what recommendation can you give for people, right? Because I think having blogs are really healthy because you're adding to your pages, you know, you're adding yeah. to your, like your site now, you're adding to like how much like data you're sending to Google. Like how do people like, you know, like um, that don't use your service or they don't like, you know, like they just, you know, and they, they, they try to do it themselves, you know, which is, there's a lot of people doing that. Like how would you reckon, what advice can you give to them on how to come up with like, what are good um, blog topics to, to, to write about? Right. I, I would start with what's in the clinic. What are the most common things that you hear when you're treating patients, right? I have difficulty doing this or I have difficulty doing that, or, you know, I found you guys because of this, that's a great place to start. Right. And then what you can yeah. do there is just write down a whole list of those topics and boom, you've got a, you got a great, you know, blog content to start going for. Um, and uh, there's uh, some other services out there that can give you ideas. Right. And then from there, just, I would take that, those key things and then map out sort of a schedule for it. And then what you could do is if you feel like you want to type it all up and come up with the content yourself, that's great. What you might want to do is um, record some things for yourself and there's different services out there that you can pay that will write up things for you. Uh, you're yeah. just going to basically come up, you know, even just a voice recorder and they'll take it and they'll write it all out for you. And then you can just copy and paste it into your, your website. Yeah. blog. I love it. I love it. I, I find a lot of people just randomly like write blog articles. Right. And, and when I've seen what you've done really well with um, what you do with your, your business and your clients is that like um, you're actually researching what people are searching for. Right. Yeah. You know, you're actually using like you're going into Google and find out what the what are the key topics that people are, are going to, you know, um, and then you're going to be writing like 
blogs that complement, you know, your SEO. Right. And so that's actually being like something you can be really smart about. And there's, there's, there's two websites. I really like everyone. Like, so everyone, you could use Google, like keywords, you know, you could type in like, um, you could type in like certain keywords and see what people are searching for. Here's another one I really like, you know, it's something called like answer the public, you know? So if, if, if you're like, if you want to go after like back pain treatment, you know, everyone like, um, it's gonna, uh, let's just say back pain, you know, right. Um, it'll actually give you a list of all these different types of topics, right. That, um, and it, it visualizes in a way where, um, uh, I give you certain different topics that you use for your headline, you know, right. Mm -hmm. Um, and this is like something I learned from it taking a while to load up, but here's a good tool, um, that will help you create certain, let's, let's see if it happens. Oh, there you go. Okay. I'll give you 80 different ways to actually talk about back pain, you know, based on what people search, right. You know, yeah. if this, yeah. Like this is giving you ideas on like, Hey, like how you talk about, like, you know, like this makes it like really cool for you. And like, you know, what's, uh, what is this? Like, but like there's, and then if you tie this back into like the search data, it'll allow you like, Hey, what are topics I should go for? If, if this makes sense, type in like research, everyone. I think part of like writing the right blog article is, is deciding what type of um, keywords you're going for that will complement your site map that will complement your SEO. Right. Absolutely. So, yeah. Yeah. And so everyone type in the chat, what was your biggest takeaway from like what Neil said today, everyone type that in the chat, everyone, what is your biggest takeaway from what Neil said today? You know, I had like massive amount of like learning. So I, I want to hear what everyone else is doing, right? What is your biggest takeaway from what, uh, from, uh, from our, our, uh, our web class with Neil, right? All right. The site map, you site know, map. Right? video what photos. Excellent. Yeah. Spend money on the videos and don't cheap on the videos and photos or everyone. And, and you don't have to do even just doing the photos is important. Everyone photos of your team pages, photo of like you working with someone, your hero pages, right? You know, right. Yeah. Uh, what else? Site map, site map, headshot, you versus us. Right. Love it. Love that. Right. Yes. You know? and, and, and no stock photos. Right. And I'll, I'll tell you the stock photo I see all the time. I see that Hawaiian girl running, you know, you know what person <laughs> yes. I'm talking about? <laughs> She's like running like, with like, with like yeah. Vancouver, her background. That is the image I see all the time. And the other one I see is like this, like this, like new grad out of school. And he's kind of like uh, uncomfortably working with someone. Like it's like the stock photo I see on every single website. Like there's I no know, brand right? presence. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I could just tell you, we love working with practices that put a good effort into their photos and, and even if they want to go to the videos, but just the photos alone, it just makes our jobs so much easier because we've got these rich yeah. photos to use. But unfortunately, a lot of clinics don't put that, that investment or that effort into that. They don't realize the value in those pictures. Um, so you have to put the stock photos in there uh, to, to do, to kind of, you know resonate. what I'm sad to see here? No one wrote like, um, no one wrote like, 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 like the eBooks, like the free webinars and like the, like all those different marketing hooks. Right. right. Because I, it, it's just, I'm like, what do you mean? Like if everyone's followed me over the years, my entire business is built off content marketing. Right. You know, so I'm actually giving you like free eBooks. I'm giving you like free webinars. Right. I'm actually giving you like, you know, do the mystery shopper test. I'm doing all these different little hooks to create value. And then I bring you into like my email marketing and which at some point I'm going to nurture you. And then you're going to like, likely buy something from me. Right. And so, yeah. um, I don't understand why more clinics owners don't do that, Neil, you know? Yeah, and I, I, I think there's this fear people seeing like, well, I don't like sending emails or email marketing doesn't work. Right. You know, yeah, Neil, right. how would you respond to that? <laughs> yeah, I think, uh, some, they, they can, I don't know, sometimes feel maybe a little too salesy or whatever, whatever the kind of stigma is or fear that they have, but I, you know, uh, eBooks, workshops are great virtual workshops whatever you do there we, we you know work with all kinds of groups that do workshops and we'll get a lot of people uh, clicking through the website to uh, uh, work run workshops um, in there so that's another option if you don't want to go the kind of the ebook route right how can you deliver yeah. more kind of uh, uh, you know online workshops or uh, even virtual workshops right yeah yeah I would love that like I, like like good examples like on this page here I would actually have like hey look Hey, I have a back workshop coming up. Hey, do you want like a, do you want a free, like a video, like scan, you know, like I'll do a free, like there's all these different ways that you can hook them, collect their emails and market them. Right. So